Hello, everybody, and welcome to day two of March Break for the Mind, sponsored by Minds Matter. My name is Lauren Deckelbaum, and it is a pleasure to be with you here on your screen in the virtual world. Um, I am a designer with Minds Matter. I bridge the gap between the world of scientific evidence and the real messy world of work, our real life experience, um, helping to design courses uh, that have lasting impact. And I also work as a senior researcher for the University of Toronto's Leadership Development Lab. Um, as you may have guessed, my area of expertise lies in organizational psychology and leadership, and I have a master's degree from the London School of Economics in organizational psychology. And today's theme for day two is, drum roll please, emotional intelligence. EI. So some of you may have heard this term before, emotional intelligence. And my key message for this short 10 minute video is that temperament is not destiny. So EI can be learned and improved at any age. It's not an inborn talent. It's always the result of education and practice. So first I'm going to invite you just for these 10 minutes to mute your phone, put away any distractions and just commit to transferring into this video, commit to learning. And the first thing I'm going to have you do is close the door to your office or ensure you're in a space alone because you might look a little silly for this first exercise. I'll invite you to pause the video for one moment to do whatever you have to do, close your door, go into a different room, mute your notifications. And now we're gonna begin. So I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes. Clock how you're feeling. Are any emotions present? Now, everybody stand up, put your arms in the air, stretch, smile as big as you possibly can, stand up, stretch with a straight back, deep breath, make yourself as big as possible, as huge as possible and as huge of a smile as possible, stretch to the right, stretch to the left, smiling, now sit back down, put your hands down. Close your eyes. Clock how you're feeling. Are any emotions present? You can slowly blink your eyes open. And tell me, did you notice any differences? We're gonna circle back to this exercise in just a moment. But first we should define emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, interpret, and process emotions in yourself and in others. There are several empirical models of emotional intelligence out there, but for today, we're gonna to be using the most recent model by Daniel Goleman, because it most reliably predicts workplace outcomes. And this model involves four main components. So there are four main elements to emotional intelligence in this model. And the first is self-awareness. So self-awareness, knowing what you're feeling and how it impacts you is the foundational element of emotional intelligence. Next is self-management, managing your emotions. So using that self-awareness to understand what's going on for you and then responding intentionally. Next is social awareness which involves empathy, tuning into other people and what they're feeling, and then putting those three together to four, manage your relationships, relationship management, to be effective with others. And this fourth domain is usually the most visible component of emotional intelligence, but the other three, so self-awareness, self-management, and social awareness, are needed in order to get to that fourth step of relationship management. So we can think of emotional intelligence as a pyramid, right? 
with self aware this is my pyramid stance <laughs> with self awareness on the bottom the foundational level and then self management social awareness relationship management they all build upon each other you need those earlier components in order to get to the later ones okay and the exercise we just did was a practice of the foundational element of emotional intelligence self awareness in that exercise we recognized which emotions were present, both while we were sitting, and then after we did the stretching and smiling exercise and sat back down. Now, is self-awareness something that you personally need to practice? So are you somebody who's relatively above average in self-awareness already, or is it something that you need to practice? According to research, by organizational psychologist Tasha Urish, 95% of people think that they're self-aware, but only 10 to 15% actually are. And even more, working with colleagues who are not self-aware can cut a team's success in half and lead to increased stress at work. And so, though we may feel we're self-aware, we're probably not. There's probably room for improvement. And two ways to improve our self-awareness are through mindful meditation and feedback. Beyond self-awareness, which is the foundational element of emotional intelligence, what else did you notice from our initial exercise? The second block in the emotional intelligence period, period, pyramid, is self-management. So in the exercise, we also got a glimpse into the fact that our bodies can impact our emotions and that we can use our bodies to manage our emotions. So I often say our physiology can change our psychology. So when you're fearful, practice a stance of confidence and pride. When you're angry, you might relax all your muscles and smile. In fact, our bodies, thoughts, and emotions are like a triangle. If we change one, the other two shift with it. And so if we're feeling emotional and we change our bodies, our emotions will shift. And today, we had time to go through those first two building blocks of the emotional intelligence pyramid, right? Self-awareness and self-management. Science proves that emotional intelligence predicts stronger interpersonal relationships, stronger professional relationships, less stress at work, better decision making, and increased overall career and life success. But on the other hand, having low emotional intelligence is dangerous. So it can negatively impact our personal relationships, our physical health, our mental health, and our careers. To close how I open, I wanted to remind you that emotional intelligence is a practice. And as we learn to build our own emotional intelligence, we're also going to have to learn that if other people are not emotionally intelligent, it's simply because they lack the education or the practice. So the same way I wouldn't get angry at you for not knowing how to speak Japanese, we can't get frustrated and impatient with those that are less emotionally intelligent than us, that are less practiced. In all, I invite you to set an intention for building your own emotional intelligence practice. So for example, by committing to listening to the guided audio recording, the guided meditation I'll include in the description of this video, every morning after brushing your teeth to practice self-awareness. For any questions, on the first two blocks of emotional intelligence that we went through today, so self-awareness and self-management, for the other two blocks, social awareness and relationship management, or for anything else, send me an email. I want to thank you all for being an active member of the Minds Matter community. We're all so lucky to be here. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for day three of March Break for the Mind.